Welcome to Big Cove Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Kim. We're glad that you are here. Today is Memorial Day weekend, and we're celebrating that a little bit today in remembrance of those uh, soldiers that have fallen. And we're also in celebration today because it is Pentecost Day, and it's the day that the church began. And we're going to be talking a little bit about today the day that the church began in addition to our butterfly theme that we've been living in for a few weeks about emerging and metamorphosis. And we're gonna be blending those two together for a very unique worship experience today. So let us begin our worship. Friends, we gather today for a special occasion in the life of the church, Pentecost. This week, our imaginations and hearts have an opportunity to soar free while still inside the protection of our chrysalises. Today, we celebrate the life of this beloved community by honoring the start of the church and allowing ourselves to imagine a different and new future filled with God's presence and possibilities. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> Through growing pains and awkward phases, we wondered. Am I always going to feel this way? Before we came to this community, we wondered. Where could I find a spiritual home? We all come from different backgrounds and hold different views, and we wonder. How can, How can we faithfully hold space for so many different opinions? Opinion? We look to the future of our church and our world and we wonder. Where will God call us to go next? Then the spirit of the divine reminds us. You are all a part of me. With imagination, you can merge to renewed life again and again. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, as we sit still in your chrysalises with a slight crack appearing, we wonder and imagine what life could be like outside in the sunlight. Last week we found the crack. This week we explore all that we imagine might be outside our protective shell, not just for ourselves, but for your church. We thank you for this time of preparation and of renewal while still in our safety zones. Be with us today as we call to your Holy Spirit to be among us in our imaginings. Amen. Now we share with God 
our thoughts, our feelings. And this time we're just going to meditate as we hear some words. Um, lately I've been meditating a little bit to music and to sounds of water. And today we're meditating just to some words that maybe we'll, we can reflect on um, as we give ourselves to God. Let us reflect together. Holy Spirit, we're not sure we're ready for your awesome power to blow through our lives. We've grown comfortable with our familiar habits, comfortable in our chrysalises. We're often afraid to give up our waking slumber and face the air outside as we cling to our ways, to the walls of our cocooned places and the safety of familiar paths. Oh God, wake us up, shake us up, heat us up, and breathe your life into us. Walk with us, O oh God, and give us the courage to follow the way that is lit by the fire of your spirit. On this day of Pentecost, we pray for the audacity to ride the winds of change. Amen. for those times when we are not sure we're ready for God to mold us, to melt us into something new, to help us to emerge from that chrysalis, from those times when we want to cocoon even further. His grace allows us to come forth because in that hiding, when God really wants us to emerge, we are forgiven and redeemed by his grace. I will be reading from Numbers 11, verses 24 and 25, and this is from the modern English version. Moses went out and he spoke to the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them around the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was on him and gave it to the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do it again. All the way back to the Old Testament, we have the spirit coming in. I'll be reading to you several long passages from the book of Acts, just to kind of put it in context. Um, the book of Acts was written by the same person who wrote the book of Luke, and we know that he was a contemporary of Paul, but don't know his true identity. And the book of Acts, its main focus is on the start of the early church. I'm going to read you part of Acts 1, and then I'll read you part of Acts 2. Acts 1, 1 to 14. Dear Theophilus, in the first volume of this book, I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he said goodbye to the apostles, the ones he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. 
After his death, he presented himself alive to them in many different settings over a period of 40 days. In face-to-face -face meetings, he talked to them about things concerning the kingdom of God. They met and ate meals together. He told them they were on no account to leave Jerusalem, but must wait for what the Father promised. The promise you heard from me, he said, John baptized in water, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and soon. When they were together for the last time, they asked, Master, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Is this the time? He told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. These were his last words. As they watched, he was taken up and disappeared in a cloud. They stood there staring into the empty sky and suddenly two men appeared in white robes and they said, you Galileans, why do you just stand there looking up at an empty sky? This very Jesus who was taken up from among you to heaven will come as certainly and mysteriously as he left. So they left the mountain called Olives and returned to Jerusalem. It was a little over half a mile. They went to the upper room they had been using as a meeting place. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James. They agreed they were in this for good, completely together in prayer, the women included, also Jesus' mother, Mary, and his brothers. The scene has been set. Now let's go into Acts 2. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and without warning, it was like a sound, like a strong wind, a gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our other various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, <clears throat> Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked. They're, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all you view visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved. The word of the Lord. Those are powerful stories, aren't they? They're super powerful. The disciples stayed in Jerusalem and they were in hiding and were praying. They cocooned a bit and thought a lot. They must have done some amazing talking and thinking because look at Peter. He certainly came out of this experience a leader. He got out there and he spoke in front of this crowd what weeks before he was hiding. But he and the others did have a lot of growing to do before emerging to the call of the Holy Spirit. From the call to worship, through growing pains and awkward phases, we wondered, am I always going to feel this way? We've all felt that way at one time or another, growing pains. 
Am I always going to feel this way? Have you ever heard of the practice of mindfulness? Who's ever heard of the practice of mindfulness? Raise your hand. A few of you, okay? Mindfulness is a practice where we focus on how we're feeling in the moment, our physical, mental, and emotional state in the moment without judging ourselves or over-identifying with any of those states. Accepting the state that you're in in the moment is often very difficult. The disciples might have been in a fight or flight state for a long, long time. And somehow they got to a place where they could embrace the new experience of the Holy Spirit. And this takes time and mindfulness. So let me give you a current day example of a mindfulness situation. Okay, let's say I have an encounter with a colleague that isn't pleasant. Okay, the colleague comes into my office and starts berating me for a mistake I made on a report. Now, it was a small mistake, but there was a mistake there. After they leave my office, after all the berating, I feel terrible. All kinds of emotions surround me, like uh, embarrassment, shame, humiliation, anger, fury, and really unkind thoughts about the person that delivered the berating, right? When a person is practicing mindfulness, they allow those feelings of the moment to surface and they examine them. What am I feeling right now? But the trick is they have to sit in those feelings and it can be uncomfortable. It's if it's a negative emotion, if it's very really negative and they're not feeling too panicked, they need to remind themselves that this emotion is not a permanent feeling. It is temporary. It's a temporary state of mind. In the practice of mindfulness, we sit with the emotion for a while, accept it for what it is, then ask ourselves what we want to do with this feeling or emotion we're having right now. Because sitting in it isn't easy. But often it's better than letting all those emotions take charge of our actions. Look at what the disciples faced when they emerged from hiding. It was a scene fit for the gods with fire and light and sounds and wind, all after emerging from hiding and from some kind of state of mindfulness. They had to be ready to face the new tomorrow without Jesus. They had to take the lead in creating a new church that was for all people, not just the Jews from the call to worship. Before we came to this church community, we wondered, where could I find a spiritual home? We were all very blessed to have found Big Cove Church to call home. That includes you online, friends. Yet Big Cove is undergoing changes just like most churches in the world are post-pandemic. And I believe all churches have needed to engage in the practice of mindfulness since arriving at the other side of the pandemic. If we sit for a while and reflect on things like, hmm, the church has changed a lot since I was raising my children in the church. Hmm, I wonder why my kids don't go to church anymore. Hmm, church isn't needed in the same way for people like it was in the 1970s. Hmm, why don't people want to come to church as much anymore? Sitting with these questions for a while might be important. And then perhaps asking another question. What can we do to be the presence of light to the people that feel as though they will never set foot inside a church again? How can we share the love of God we feel in this space right now with those not in this space right now? After reflecting and talking and sitting with these questions, we'll find that the church universal has been through metamorphosis many, many times throughout the centuries. And when we look around today, we can recognize that we're in a state of thinking, rediscovery, and reformation now, not unlike the disciples were during and before Pentecost. The pandemic has shocked our practices of worship and mission into adaptation. Remember, friends, worshiping outside? Remember that? Remember meeting by Zoom? Online worship? Remember all of you taking your phones and putting it in front of you and reading a call to worship? And now adapting to a smaller context. 
It's taken imagination and will continue to take a lot of imagination and fortitude to move the new church of tomorrow, to move into that for all churches because the pandemic was very hard. Dr. Seuss reminds us in his book called Oh, the Places You'll Go that we have the power and ability to serve the kingdom, but not without imagination. Let's listen to a few excerpts. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the one who'll decide where to go. You're off to great places, today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on the way. You'll come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. But mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? Dr. Seuss, oh, the places you'll go. I want you to imagine just for a moment the church as it is right now, our church, Big Cove, and all the amazing things that it is. Because for a small church, we have a big heart. And we're an amazing church. Now I want you to imagine Big Cove in the future. In the future. What's its signature in the future? What's it known for? Okay, the Lions Club is known for what? Helping people often with glasses, right? Salvation Army, poor. Red Cross. Blood and disasters, Blood and disasters right? Habitat for Humanity. Building homes, right? Exactly. So put your imagination thinking caps on for a moment and imagine what Big Cove could be known for in the future. What could its signature be? Think about that. What could its signature be in the future? Well, you mentioned Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. Like Habitat for Humanity. Um, they, they're known for building. They're known for building, right? So maybe Big Cove could be a church that helps people build lives of faith and good Oh, so Big Cove could be a church known for building, say it again, building, building lives, of faith lives of faith and good Christian, and good Christian living. Good. That's awesome. It's a motto. I like that. I like a unique insight. It does, doesn't it? That's cool. Anybody else? Yes. Judy? Uh, kindness. Kindness. And everybody just speaking to you because before we came to this church, it was all. Nobody spoke to us. Okay. So... so Right, it's, it's a small has its advantages, right? Yes. So kind of welcoming and hospitality? Yes. That's great, I love that. Yes? Um, I'd like for us to be known as... To be known as? The church that loves its community. The church that loves its community. That's a good signature. Anybody else? Yes, Melinda. Empty chairs filled with people in need. All right. So church family to all and acceptance comes in with that. We're the church that loves everyone, all. Come as you are. I think of that, right? Like they could come in their pajamas and we go, hey, how are you? You know, that's kind of nice, isn't it? It's a wonderful thing. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? Church with imaginative youth programs. That's wonderful. See, that's future thinking, right? That is super. Huh, there's a lot to stew on there, isn't there? There's like a super, super lot to stew on. The disciples were stuck in the city of Jerusalem waiting. Jesus told them to wait, and in the waiting, inside their chrysalises, they were planning and wondering and imagining, just like we just did. Using our imaginations on Big Cove Church helps us to prepare for our future. And using our imaginations involves some risk taking. Here's a story. There's a story about a young woman named Denise who came to a church that was unlike the church she was raised in. In the tradition she was raised in, she was told to not ask questions and that she was too unworthy to read the Bible herself, so she had to leave that to the experts. She was told that she couldn't pray directly to God, but instead needed intermediaries to do that for her. And she left the church after feeling very inadequate before God. 
So at this new church, those rules didn't apply. And she felt accepted and she grew in confidence. Then she started asking questions in Bible study or after worship to the pastors. Wait a minute, hold it, hold it, that doesn't make sense. Explain that to me. That couldn't possibly be true. Really? How come that's different in the book of Matthew? I don't get it. Her comments and questions were welcomed in this church because they made the leaders of the church rethink their Christian ease, the language they used, the topics they discussed. They were all insider topics with insider language, insiders to the ones who'd already been there or who'd been in this denomination for generations. Here Denise was challenging this a bit and it was refreshing. And the pastor was there with Denise the first time she prayed out loud ever, ever. Remember, she was never allowed to do this before. Her prayer was powerful and beautifully honest and real. About a year meeting in this new church, Denise and the leadership decided they would start a new expression of church, an extension of the church that they were all serving. Denise herself started a fresh expression church called Church 3.1. You see, Denise was an avid runner and she had a passion for long distance running. Her new church group is made up of young professionals that love to run long distances. They gather at various running locations and they pray and run and they come back the following week to process what God's been up to in their lives since they last met. And part of that check-in involves reading a couple of Bible verses together from their screens, their phones. Here was tiny petite Denise, surrounded by mostly larger men, deeply engaged in the Fit Culture Network. Denise's imagination and her inquisitive spirit led her and the leadership of the church to try something new. And Denise coming into the church as a baby Christian after one year was ready to walk with others in their faith journey who had an investment in something she was passionate about, running. Neat story, right? It's a true story. And it comes from the book, A Field Guide to Methodist Fresh Expressions by Michael Beck and Jorge Acevedo. I have met Michael and spoken to him from the call to worship. We look to the future of our church and our world and we wonder, where would God call us to go next? In order for the disciples to leave their safe places, their chrysalises, and accept the Holy Spirit, they have had to be mindful of all that had happened and imaginative about what could be. They had to. Look at what they were facing, the hostility. Oh my goodness. We too must be mindful as we discern about Big Cove Church and its calling. We must use our imaginations and use God as our guiding star, expecting the Holy Spirit to light upon us, just like that Pentecost day. The church has been formed by God for the purpose of shining its light into the kingdom, into the community, to share the love of God wherever we go. And some of those imaginings that you shared today were gobbled up by the Holy Spirit, I'm sure of it. And the Holy Spirit will be working with us and in us as we grow in God and grow with each other. Because the spirit of the divine reminds us, you are all a part of me. With imagination you can emerge to renewed life again and again. Amen. Now comes a time in our service when we give prayers to God and we as a community have shared prayers here. We welcome you friends at home to share your prayers as well. You can type them in where you are there or type a note to me, pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com or go on our website and you'll be welcome to add a prayer there and we'd love to be able to help you in your prayer needs. Everyone has prayer needs. Everyone needs to give them to God. And we have a community here that's amazing because what they do is they pray for each other all the time. And they also lift you up online in prayer. And they also pray together as one voice for the people that are in need. And that's unusual and unique and wonderful. So we're very grateful that God has provided that for us. Let us pray. God, we thank you today for the specialness of this day. Pentecost Day that we remember and we celebrate the love that you had for your church by sending your spirit on those early, early Christians and help them to find their voice through imagination and fortitude to start the church 
And through generation after generation, century after century, things have adapted and molded and they're still reforming and changing still, God. And we know that you have your hand in that. And the Holy Spirit, we know, heard all the interesting thoughts that came through in our voices today about what Big Cove could be in the future. And we know that we rely on you for that. This weekend is also Memorial Day weekend, God, and we lift up all those people that have family members that have fallen in the line of duty, oh God. And we ask you to comfort them because even if it's 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it doesn't matter. This weekend brings it fresh. It becomes fresh. And sometimes graves are visited and it's hard for people. We'd like them to know somehow through you, oh God, that we honor their families and that we respect all that they have done for this country. Lord, we have several people that are in need today and um, we'd also like to just lift up a few travel mercies for just a few people. Um, we'd like to lift up Joni, Joni. and Elena, Elena and I think that was it. Just Joni and Elena, Lord, um, and their travel mercies for this weekend. We also lift up these names to you and you know what their troubles are, Lord. We lift up Allison, Allison. and Gary, Gary and Becky, Becky and Diane, Diane. and Sandra, Sandra and Jeff, Jeff. and Tom, Tom and Neil, Neil. and Don, Don and Myra, Myra and Renan, Renan and Bob, Bob and Anne. And Shirley, Shirley, and Janie, Janie. and Doris, Doris, and Helen, Helen. and Pat. Pat. And we also ask you, God, to be with a, a team that has traveled a distance to do competition sports, O oh Lord, Jasir, and to wrap your arms around them as the team travels to and from. Parents always get concerned about this, God, because of the accidents that can happen on the road with a whole team. So we ask that you bless them and keep them as well. Lord, we lift up our church to you and ask that you continue to keep us in imagination to while we're enveloped in our own chrysalises of our community love that we have for each other, that you help us to see the crack of daylight that comes in while we are serving you, to be able to recognize where you call us in the future. It's been a while, Lord, about five years since we've really thought like this, and it's time for us now to be re-emerging and thinking and collectively putting our thoughts together to imagine what you want your church to be. So we ask that you hold us in that and hold us to it, God, and push us and niggle us where we need to be niggled. Because you are the great provider and the great teacher who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's time for us to give back to God. We come today in the presence of this Holy Spirit, and are humble by all that we have experienced. Living still inside our crystallis, we can only imagine what new heights God will bring us to and the love that God has to share with us. Many in our community are not able to feel this love of Christ and have no witness to the Holy Spirit. We give our tithes and our offerings and our talents and ourselves so that we may be the witness to the grace and goodness of God. At the back of the room, there's an offering box that supports the ministries of Big Cove Church. There's also a box to support the Presbyterian Home for Children. For you at home, if you feel led by the Spirit to contribute to the mission and the vision of Big Cove Church, go to our website, www.bigcovechurch.org. Now, let's share our gifts.
Let's pray together. Pentecost God, take our hearts and set them on fire. Take our lives and transform them. Take our church and resurrect it with your life-giving spirit. Take our gifts and use them for the fulfillment of your vision of peace and unity and shared love. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing the story. The story of Jesus. Come stand and sing. Pentecost 
feeling the spirit. We talked about how those men were trapped inside a chrysalis for quite a while, not knowing what was going to happen next, but they had to emerge with some kind of imagination to bring the church to where we are today, and we are grateful. So continue your thoughts, your imaginations, as we emerge together to figure out where God calls us as individuals and as Big Cove Church. So go now knowing that you are loved by God, that you hold the spirit inside you and touched on your head, and everywhere you go, shine the light of Christ. Amen. Amen.